This is the second lecture on health safety and environmental management applied to offshore and petroleum engineering HSC program. We are talking about lectures on module 1. Module 1 is focusing on safety assurance and assessment. We are talking about lecture 2 where I am going to continue introduction to safety as we discussed in the last lecture. I hope you have followed the last lecture. Let us continue to ask a question what do we understand by safety in the perspective of oil and gas industries. Let us continue introduction to safety. We always understood that an offshore safety engineer needs to understand the following. The work environment what is he working is hazardous in nature. He needs to study on safety observation systems carefully. He must understand risk assessment methods and models. He must perform tasks that require permit to work and he must do personal responsibilities in asset integrity with enthusiasm. He must participate in controlling use of hazard substances offshore because they can result in catastrophic accidents. He must possess a very good knowledge and practice a working at height because cranes of different capacity and different boom lengths are being deployed in offshore industry. He must understand very carefully the mechanical lifting devices, their limitations etcetera and he must undergo thoroughly the emergency response mechanisms and methods available on shore so that he can practice them in case of emergency. Now, more interestingly in safety perspective generally the education of safety is given to people as based on the lessons learnt from the past. Every accident which is created, caused, happened or situation created all are unfortunate, but we learn lot of lessons from these kinds of accidents. Let us quickly see what are the lessons we learnt from the past. On 6th July 1988, you have seen there is a Piper Alpha disaster happened in North Sea. 167 people killed and they essentially resulted in large fire. The second accident which you could recollect is on 27 March 1980, which happened in Alexander Kailan, Scotland, Norway. About 123 people, all of them working on board were killed and the bracing essentially collapsed, it is a structural failure. The third accident which comes to mind is on 14 February 1982, it is on Ocean Ranger. All 84 people working on board were killed and the result was essentially caused by the waves exceeding phenomenal height of about 20 meters. So, it is a natural reason or environmental cause which resulted in this accident. The other accident is interestingly happened on 20th March. 2001, Petrobras, Brazil, 10 people killed on board and the powerful blast and sinking happened which you see in the photograph. The next accident occurred on July 2004, Themsa platform in Egypt, all 150 people were saved very importantly. Please note that this is a very classical example where accidents could occur but people can save their lives. So, there has been some emergency response planning which has been done carefully and executed successfully when people of 150 in volume can save their lives successfully. But of course, the platform resulted in fire. Now, one can ask a specific question about this specific case study. Do you think that this case study is successful because people have been saved? If the answer is yes, it is unfortunate you do not associate any value for the asset which has been set up blazed. Safety is not only addressing personal safety, safety should also address safety of the equipments, plants and machineries. Because all these equipments, plants and machineries involving production are unique, custom designed and they are very, very expensive. So, when you talk about safety, I do not emphasize safety only for the personal but also for the plants and machineries and equipments involved in production because I am bothered about not only the people working on board, but also about the image of the industry 
in finance market, in commercial viability and also image in the public domain. So, this accident is also dangerous because the platform is set to ablaze though people have been saved. Interestingly, there is a capsize which happened on 11 July 2005, the famous Thunder Horse platform, full crew working on board was completely saved. But unfortunately, the thunderstorm hurricane Dennis collapsed the platform totally made it not reusable. Interestingly, this is a very important accident happened on 15 July 2005. Parker rig which was meant for drilling rig 57 in New Orleans, full crew was saved, but the rig ran aground and completely overturned. So, the operational feasibility of the rig was challenged completely subsequent to this accident. There is again a fire accident you could see in the photograph happened on August 2009, Montara Wellhead platform north of Australia resulted in complete ablaze of the platform. There is no report of people working on board on this accident. Interestingly again fire set on 25th April 2010, you could remember this disaster. This was proclaimed very famous disaster in Gulf of Mexico which is called the famous BP disaster. We undergo these accident studies only with one pathetic information that we learn from these accidents. These are not simple pictures and films which is showing you how many people died, which industry was resulted in loss etcetera. Please ignore these facts, try to understand that these are lessons what we are going to derive. There are important readings, lessons, targets which we can achieve by learning mistakes from these accidents. This happened in Transocean Rig in Gulf of Mexico, 11 people killed on board and there is a complete blowout disaster because the blowout preventer failed and there is a set ablaze to the platform. Interestingly in India, we had a chemical release happened on Bhopal gas tragedy on December 2nd 1984. The leak of methyl isocyanate gas caused an exothermic reaction. This increased the temperature of the container to a very high value of 200 degree centigrade which raised the pressure and ultimately resulted in fissures where the gas was leaked. Interestingly ladies and gentlemen, there is a portrait developed by a painter or a sculpture in this scenario where the lady is not able to even feed the child without closing her nose. So, that is a very pathetic information on this kind of process industries accidents happen on land, but since it is related to the gas industry, this example is quoted in this presentation. Now, interesting question comes, if you look at the summary interestingly, July 6, 1988, Piper Alpha North Sea fire was set, 167 people killed, followed by which 27 March 1980 on the list. Please understand these accidents are not resulted or not recorded chronologically, but there are some interesting information we derive from these accidents when we do risk analysis in the subsequent lectures. So, the second extent what we are interested is the 27 March 1980, Alexander Kaylan, Scotland, Norway, the bracing collapsed, structural failure, all 123 people killed. The next accident is followed by H is 14 February 1982, the Ocean Ranger, Grand Banks, Canada, waves of very phenomenal height, more than 20 meters was reported all 84 people working on board were killed. 20th March 2001, Petrobras, Brazil, powerful blast and sinking of the platform, 10 people working on board were killed. July 2004, Themsa platform, Egypt, it was set fire, but all 150 people working on board were saved. 11 July 2005, Thunder Horse, Thunderstorm and Hurricane Dennis damaged the platform, but full crew was saved. 15 July 2005, Parker Rig 57, New Orleans, the drilling rig ran aground and overturned and found to be completely irreparable, but there was no report of loss of life. August 2009, Timer Sea Australia, rig was set to fire. 
25th October 1983, Glomer Java Sea drill ship, South China Sea Typhoon Lex, 81 people killed. 25th November 79, Bohai 2, Gulf of Bohai, China storm while towing, 72 people killed. 30th June 1964, C.P. Baker drilling barge, Gulf of Mexico, shallow gas blowout, 22 people killed. 27 July 2005, BHN Bombay High, vessel collision, 11 people killed, 11 people found missing. My dear ladies and gentlemen, please note, we are talking about missing of people which are, who are very highly skilled professionals. 23 October 2007, Usman Chinta, Gulf of Mexico, storm come blowout, 22 people killed. Now, the question comes, when you look at these accidents, where is the safety assurance? Why safety was not implemented as a training program, which could have prevented these accidents? The answers are very interesting. There are extreme limitation of knowledge to predict these events, because these events were not planned, they were all happened incidentally because of various factors which will result in the next slide. The past experience learned by the safety professional was not found to be sufficient to estimate these accidents in advance. Now, the fundamental question comes to our mind as a safety executive is why do such accidents happen? These events are very rare as you have seen I have taken statistics from 1964 till 2010 compared to them about 17 to 21 major accidents were reported. So, the frequency is very rare, very low, but the impact cost is very severe. If so, how to guarantee the human and the process safety under such conditions? So, this is the valid point where every safety executive need to answer the people or personnel on board if you really want to promote a good working culture with the technical people working on board in oil and gas industries. Where is the safety assurance for people working on board? Because these accidents teach us a lesson that the limitations of knowledge do not train people to predict these events. That is very important. So, let us create a clear summary here. Accidents in oil and gas industry cannot be predicted. Can they be modeled? Can you create a scenario, simulate a scenario where these studies can be calculated and foreseen in advance? The answer is yes. That is where risk assessment becomes a very important subject for a safety engineer to understand. Now, interestingly, if you look at the gas and oil industry, it continues to experience major accidents very frequently. Bhopal 1984, Phillips disaster Pasadena 1989, Texas City refinery oil blow up 2005, Toulouse France 2001 Piper disaster. So, these are all very interesting and noticeable accidents which has spoiled, which has challenged the images of respective companies which have been working in the industry for many years together. So, accidents do not only bring bad economy to the industry, but also bad name and fame to the company which is owning these production units. Now, let us quickly look at the consequences of these accidents. Look at Bhopal 1984, 3500 fatalities and financial loss estimated is 470 million US dollars. Phillips disaster, only 23 people died, but the financial loss is 800 million US dollars. Toulouse, France, only 29 people died, but financial loss is about 180 million US dollars. Texas City refinery, only 15 people died, but 1.5 billion US dollars financial loss. Please understand that the number of fatalities and the amount of financial loss are not proportionate and they are not scalable. So, it all depends upon where the accident is actually occurring. So, it is important that the event can be rare, but the consequences can be multidimensional. A consequence happening in a process industry compared to a manufacturing refinery industry can vary in fatality as well as in financial loss significantly ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, the risk assessment methods should have a mechanism to capture both the fatality or the personal safety as well as 
the economical loss caused to the industry because of these accidents. If you look at the causes for accidents in petroleum chemical industry, if you look at the paper given by Nevinu Tuli et al 2006, Prem et al 2010, Khan et al 1999, they simply summarize and show that the reasons for these accidents are equipment failure about 44 percent, human error about 19 percent, equipment plus human put together about 21 percent and other factors about 19 percent and environmental and equipment environment are very marginal. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen being a safety executive kindly do not take the risk on making a statement saying accident occurred because of environmental reasons because these accidents being summarized for the past 40 years in oil and gas industry clearly show that the factors contributing from environment and equipment together are very marginal compared to equipment and human put together. So, if you look at equipment failure, human error and equipment plus human they come together more than about 70 percent. It means we are responsible for all the accidents. So, I should make a clear summary making a statement here if at all accident created an oil gas industry on a platform it is because of oversighting the equipment safety it is also because the people are not trained properly in safety. So, safety assurance becomes a very important segment in process industries in particular oil and gas industries very well. One can ask a question what steps are taken? to minimize such accidents. To minimize and control such hazardous incidents, different countries like US, UK and Europe have jointly developed various programs. Two important programs which I want to discuss here are different process safety programs and proposed better and stringent regulations in particular for oil and gas industries. One of the outcome is the process safety management 29 CFR 1910.119 initiated by OSHA in 1992. This is one classical example where safety measures have been stringently prescribed to oil and gas industry to be strictly adhered and followed. Now, when we talk about safety in during process or production, let us talk about PSM which is process safety management. Generally, PSM is focused on prevention, preparedness, mitigation, response and restoration. The objective is to remain proactive and systematic in identification, evaluation, mitigation and prevention of chemical releases very clearly. Very interestingly, in the management perspective, safety follows what is called an iceberg theory. What is an iceberg theory is there are different costs involved in the industry. Some are called direct costs, some are called indirect costs. Most of the cost unfortunately is hidden. What you see at the top is only the ice what you see, but there is an iceberg below which actually hidden cost, which we call intangible cost below that. Therefore, interestingly if you look at the financial losses, there are some direct costs involved in the industry, there are some indirect costs involved as well as there are something called intangible costs. One must address the safety program should address all this economy in a proper perspective to make the oil and gas industry as a successful producing or production unit. Then let us ask a question what do we understand by direct costs? There are some employee liabilities when an accident is met, there are third party liabilities there are property damages caused because of accidents. What do we understand by indirect costs? Indirect costs arise from you conduct investigations, you make site clearances, you also calculate the equipment and material damage cost because of the accident, you also worry about the plant damage, you also talk about the production delay what we call shutdown time of the product or the manage or the plant. We also talk about legal expenditure involved to set right the things in order. And of course, you will have to make the people to work overtime that will cost what is called overtime working that is an indirect cost and above all most importantly insurance compensation 
becomes a major indirect cause in such major accidents. Then what are intangible costs? The company's name and reputation is at stake when the accident is resulted in a very serious disaster. Most importantly, your stakeholders, your investors should be given a guarantee that they will get return on their income. That is what we call customer satisfaction of your business. And you lose a major business opportunity if your company undergoes accidents continuously. Now, how to manage HSE performance then? If you look at the prevention cost in three scale of x1, x2 and x3, because these are the points where x1 is the point where the failure cost is maximum, x2 is the point where the total cost is minimized, x3 is the point where the prevention cost is maximum. So, considering A and C and connecting them, you have a total budget plus minus 5 percent, make a total cost and touch at the point where the total cost becomes as least as possible. So, total cost of course includes the prevention cost and the failure cost together. Initially, the failure cost will be maximum. As you understand the errors and correct the mistakes, the failure cost can go down. Whereas, if you do not pay attention in the beginning, you have no prevention policies, the prevention cost would be practically 0 because you do not invest on safety, but you keep on investing on safety as you learn from mistakes. So, there has got to be a balance where this intersection comes through and that is a point where the total cost of an industry should be as minimum as possible that is what is called the bath tub concept. The bath tub concept says minimize the total cost which includes the prevention cost as well as the failure cost. When we want to emphasize such kind of economical balance in an oil and gas industry, then one must understand how do we conduct what is known as HSC audit. There is a management system involved in HSC audit. Let us see what are the different scenarios, different platforms, different levels where this HSC audit is generally conducted in oil and gas industry. It is very important to perform HSC audit to understand the effectiveness of HSC management because just by providing safety principles, you cannot be assured of safety. You must also know how effectively this is being practiced and proclaimed by the management. So, you have to do what is called HSE audit all the time. International sustainability rating system what we call ISRS is an international practice to measure effectiveness of safety or HSE management of any company. ISRS has different platforms to assess safety. There are different elements of ISRS which we will see one by one. First thing is how the leadership of a company is challenging or addressing the safety assurance. What is the purpose and values? What are the goals of leadership? What is the policy involved? What is the strategy you follow? What is the stakeholder engagement you do? What is the business process you address? What are the different business risks you take? And what accountabilities you produce to the auditors? And what management commitment you have for better production of tomorrow? The second stage of element of ISRS comes from planning and administration. So, you must know what is your business planning, how your work planning and control is effective, what are the actions taken in industry, how are they actually tracked, what is the management system documentation you practice and how do you maintain and update your records. The third element is how do you do risk evaluation, health hazard identification evaluation, safety hazard identification evaluation, security hazard identification evaluation, process risk identification evaluation or the different four stages how you actually do risk evaluation which is one of the important element of ISRS. The next element is from the human resources, what human resource system you practice, what are your recruitment policies, how you are managing individuals performance, how are you encouraging better workers and avoid discouraging accidents and near miss reports, recognition and discipline, how do you take care of people leaving the organization, how do you address management of organizational change in industry that is called HR management. The next level of ISRS is compliance assurance which talks about how do you form regulations, how external authorizations are allowed to operate, what are your work permit practices 
what is the industry code and standards you adopt, what reporting phenomena you do and what is the hierarchy of authorities you report, what is the information security you maintain, what is the complaints assessment you make periodically, is it week wise, month wise, year wise etcetera. The next level of element of ISRS is what is the project management you do, what is the project coordination you follow, what is the project planning you do, how do you execute the project, how do you control the loss and how do you close out the project. The next level is training and competency, what training system you play, keep in place, what the training need analysis you have done, what do you specify qualification for the instructor, what is the delivery of the timing on training. What is the leadership orientation you give to your employees? What is the general orientation you create in the work culture? What is the job orientation you create for your employees? And what training system evaluation you have to rank the training professional within your system? The next level is communication and promotions. What is the communication system you adopt? How you coordinate your meetings? How management conduct meetings? How work group meetings are conducted? how joint committee meetings are organized, what kind of coaching you extend to your employees, what recognition you give for people reporting accidents and preventing accidents, what promotion campaigns you do, how do you record away from work information. That is a very important area where even though you are not staying at the work environment, how do you communicate with people, how do you maintain the link with the communication even when you are away from the platform. The next element of ISR is focus on risk control, what are the health hazard controls you practice, what are the safety hazard controls you employ, what are the security hazard controls you have in position, what are the environmental hazard controls you practice, what quality control of material and products you deliver, what process control and operating procedures you have in your industry, what are the rules you have to control risk, how do you issue work permits, what are the warning signs and notices you have placed in position, what personal protective equipment you have and how people are trained to use these equipments are very important aspects of risk control. These are the areas where most of the people do not focus interestingly in oil and gas industry because they always think a trained safety personnel should know for example, how to operate a protective equipment. You have seen in earlier cases where major disasters happen because there is lack of coordination. So, every point in safety training becomes very important because if you really want to control the risk, you must train people first and you will be very careful in issuing what we call work permits. The next element is asset management which is very important factor of any oil and gas industry. How do you maintain or how do you develop a maintenance program? How do you do maintenance planning and scheduling? How do you execute the maintenance program? What is the review process you follow for the maintenance programs? How do you inspect general working conditions? What is the survey you conduct for physical conditions? How do you inspect special equipments? How do you conduct inspection, measuring and testing of equipments? How do you acquisition and sell your equipments? The next element is contractor HSC management, contractor supply selection, contractor operations, contractor assurance, supply chain in purchasing and logistics becomes very important in oil and gas industries. The next element is emergency preparedness, what is the level of emergency needs assessment, what is the crisis management you have, what business continuity plan you have, what emergency plan reviews you have made, what emergency communications you have established, what emergency protection systems you have in place, what emergency controls you know how to operate, what are the emergency workforce you have in place, what is the first aid practice you have what is the medical support and assistance you give to your employees and how do you organize outside assistance. That is very important because this will manage the media image of the industry in public domain. The next element becomes learning from the events. What are the learning from events failure you have conducted? Whether have you learned from any successful events? Have you participated in investigations? Have you ever reported near miss events and substandard conditions? Is complaints management properly addressed in industry? Is even announcements made properly? How do you take care of away from work accidents? What is the action follow up you have made? What is the event analysis you have done to improve or create what is called improvement teams? The next element is about rules and review. 
what are the results what you conduct because of business review what is the management review policy you have what are the reporting you have made to the stakeholders to assure there is a return on the finance investments ladies and gentlemen interestingly safety is an inherent part which one can easily practice hsc in general comes in cans i can you can and we can practice safety very easily now the fundamental question comes is can we prevent such disasters if no at least can we predict them are we mathematically capable to understand to make to model risk and hazards this is what we are going to address in this first module of lectures from tomorrow onwards there are interesting accidents reported which are unpleasant to see back again but we learn them as accidents and lessons which we should avoid as a safety executive unfortunate but we must remember a very important statement successful management will understand profit is revenue minus cost so what are those costs involved in controlling mitigating managing and training people to prevent such accidents though there may be a revenue loss here but the profit will increase because your production will go high so remember investment towards safety assurance is not a loss it's actually a cost towards safety which will add to profit when the revenue goes high thank you ladies and gentlemen bye